Good afternoon. Today is July 21st, 2024. It's currently 3.02 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I received this word yesterday, Saturday, July 20th at 10.25 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to backtrack to about uh, a week prior to this word. Um, upon waking up, the Lord said to me, just very briefly, but um, I could hear the urgency in his voice. He said, Angela, prepare my people for the fight of their life. And that's all he said. And then this word came yesterday. As always, we are told to test every spirit. I am not asking you to believe everything that you hear, I, nor am I expecting that from you. However, in order to test the Spirit, you must have the Holy Spirit. So you can ask the Holy Spirit directly. Holy Spirit, is this word coming from my Father in heaven? Is this word coming from Jesus? You can also ask the Lord in your own personal prayer time or while you're meditating on his holy word day and night, whether or not this word came from him or a different spirit. This is what the Lord said. The preparation begins. What must be emphasized more than ever. Tell them to get to know their Bible. Know what it says and what it doesn't. Read it out loud. Contemplate its meaning. Without application, studying my word is useless. They must put it into practice. Fasting is not optional. It is something everyone in my body should be doing regularly. Fasting must be accompanied by prayer, meditating on my word, worship, praise, and getting in my presence. Otherwise, they are just starving themselves. Fasting puts the flesh to death. Fasting should be a lifestyle as my child. Things to pray for. He wants you to pray for resilience, consistency order, structure, discipline, steadfastness, greater reverence, the fear of the Lord in a greater measure, a non-compromising heart, greater humility and trust in Him, greater patience when it comes to delays and inconveniences, greater listening skills when listening to my people, being slow to speak, and quick to listen and slow to get angry. Improved comprehension when speaking with my people. For all idols in their hearts to be removed and every stronghold containing the following stubbornness, willfulness, rebellion, rebelliousness, obstinacy, and hard heartedness to be broken. Pray to be delivered from all distraction every form of it, interruption, intrusion, deterrence, sidetracking and interference. Bind them if necessary in my name before entering into prayer time, getting in my word or ushering in my presence. Remind them to fight off heaviness with praise. Emphasize the importance of staying active by any means necessary when isolated in a wilderness season. This is very important. This is not the time for us to become spiritually lazy. So I'm going to emphasize this now like the Lord has told me to do. This is not the time to become spiritual lazy. This is spiritually lazy. This is not the time to be lax. This is not the time to not have a prayer life. You need to have an active prayer life. You need to be seeking the Lord with your whole heart. You need to be asking him for what he wants you to work on this week what is your daily bread before you get in the bible what are your weaknesses what are your strengths to help you with the gifts that you have been given to develop and sharpen those gifts we need to be seeking the lord and asking him what do i need to specifically be interceding for praying for praying against this is necessary and here's why this is what he said next. 
to fight bouts of lethargy, drowsiness, sleepiness, weariness, and anything else attacking your energy levels. He encourages us to get up and move around, go out for a walk, exercise, whatever you have to do to avoid being idle or lazy. Because if you fall into the temptation of idleness or laziness, the enemy is going to jump on that opportunity. And then you will notice when you're getting into your Bible that all of a sudden those sleepy spirits will be taking over and it will be that much harder for you to focus on the word. So you have to fight against that temptation. When you feel that overwhelming exhaustion coming over you, that is the time to pray, not to take a nap. The enemy will try to wear out the saints. Do not give in to temptation to become stagnant or too relaxed. Balance is very important as well. Balance is extremely important. The Lord has been helping me with this as well. He said tasks should be compartmentalized. Do not try to do too much in one day. That is a good way to wear yourself out. Set boundaries. Schedule times during the day for prayer if you have to get adequate sleep. Striving is not advised. That will exhaust you over time. The Lord said, make time for me. Make me a priority. Ask for wisdom. Lots of it. Ask for strategies against the enemy. Ask me what your focus should be for the day. Ask me what to pray for or pray against. Pray against fruitlessness because the bible says fruitless trees will be cut at the root we want to stay grafted into the tree we don't want to be cut out of it so pray against fruitlessness pray against wastefulness check your hearts daily for any legal rights any and all forms of unforgiveness pray for my will to be done in your life and in the lives of your family members, pray for my will to be done all over the earth. Pray for evil agendas, plots, plans, and schemes to be exposed and revealed. Intercede for my people. Intercede for the lost. Get into the habit of praising me. If you don't already, so heaviness will not make a home in your heart or soul. It is written, anxiety, which is a byproduct of fear, weighs down the heart. Ask for boldness, the ability to stand firm in the face of hate and mercilessness. Ask me to equip you with everything you need to endure to the end. Ask me to purge you of all compromise and to remove your desire for the things of this world. You must have a prayer life. You must be in my word. Do not make social media your Bible. Write down as much scripture as you can while you can and memorize it. You will not always have your Bibles. Because the Lord asked me to emphasize some of these things I'm going to. I don't usually give commentary at the end of a word from him. Do not make social media your Bible. You heard it from the Lord himself. It is one thing to have maybe a favorite pastor or evangelist that you watch, but do not make that your time with God. God is a jealous God. He is jealous for your affections. That's why the number one commandment is this. You are to Lord, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and then love your neighbor as yourself. Anything that we place above God or we are giving more time than him is an idol. And he wants all of our, our idols to be removed from our hearts. Now maybe you're saying that you don't have an idol. But I don't think that the Lord would emphasize it so much. If we didn't have something that we were placing above God. That could be your family. That could be your job. That could be your relationship or your, 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 your marriage. Your spouse. Even the work you do for him can be made an idol if we don't steadfastly find balance. 
It gets very, very easy for people to be deceived if you don't know what the Word of God says. If I don't know what's in the Bible, somebody could tell me anything and I just might believe it. That's why you need to be in the Word. And for those who say, well, I don't have time. Why do you have time for Netflix? Why do you have time to go on vacation? Why do you have time for all of these other things? But you don't seem to have time for God, the one who in him you live and move and have your being. Why is it that we have time for everything else? God doesn't want that excuse anymore, that you don't have time. His word is what sanctifies you. To be sanctified means to be made holy. You are not made holy just by making a simple confession and saying a prayer. You are made holy by getting in the presence of a holy God, spending time with him. Because the more time that you seek him out and the more time that you spend with him, the more that he is going to crucify your flesh and deliver you of the demonic oppression that hinders you from walking in holiness and turning your back on the world. And the Bible says without holiness, no one shall see the Lord. What makes us holy? The Holy Spirit. But you can lose that fire. You can quench the spirit so much. That he goes silent. You don't want to do that. The Holy Spirit is there to convict you of, of sin. And then it's up to us to heed that conviction. And to fight and resist temptation. Resist the devil and he will flee. What does he flee from? The devil doesn't run from a sermon. If you throw a sermon at the devil... Half the sermons that are on social media. He's not going anywhere. However, when Jesus was tempted and tried by the devil after fasting 40 days and 40 nights. And keep in mind that the spirit of God is the one who led him into that wilderness to be tempted. God tempts no one, but he will bring you into that wilderness or isolation season to be tempted so you can be tried and tested to make sure that the materials that you are building with are going to withhold the storms that are coming. Or did you not know that storms were coming? Are you waiting for uh, America to become great again? Are you waiting for everything to go back to normal? Because that's not going to happen. It's not biblical. It's not biblical. Actually, the Bible promises this. There's going to be a famine in the land, but it's not going to be a famine of food this time. There's actually going to be a famine of God's word. And the Bible says this, people are going to be looking for that word. They're going to be searching for that word and they're not going to be able to access it. He said, you will not always have your Bibles. How much of scripture do you know? God's word is written on the tablet of our hearts. That's what the Bible says. But how can God's word be written fully and completely on your heart if you're not reading it? And I'm not just talking about reading it to read. Before you get in your Bible, pray. Pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. That's your daily bread, the word. Make time. Make time for it. Study to show yourself approved. That's what we're told to do. You want to be a disciple of Christ? You have to study to show yourself approved. Why? Because there's millions of souls that are dying and going to hell every day. And they need to know what you know. But what if you don't know anything? Well, that's a problem, isn't it? How can you be part of the Great Commission? If you don't know what the Bible says. If you don't know how to explain things like justification. What makes us justified? That we're justified by faith and that faith was a gift from God so no man can boast 
And justification means that you were made righteous in the sight of God. By what? Your confession that Jesus Christ is Lord. And that God raised him from the dead. But is that confession enough? It is if that's where you stop in your Bible. But then when you get to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you notice that Jesus' first words during his ministry are repent. Repent is not a work. It's a requirement. Repent and believe. Repent and believe. Without repentance, there is no remission of sin. And repentance does not mean, God, I'm so sorry. With worldly tears, that's not what it means. Repentance is a conscious decision to turn your back on the world and fix your face like a flint on Jesus and trust him to get you the rest of the way. Because you're going to need him. I hope somebody's hearing me today. I pray you have ears to hear today. You're going to need him. You will not make it without Jesus Christ. He said, apart from me, you can't do anything. Abide in me and I will abide in you. Abide means to remain. That's not talking about come seek me once a week. Abide in him daily. Daily. The will of God. In the word, we're told the will of God is thankfulness. Many of us, I know many of us, have stopped thanking God for the things that he's doing on a day-to-day. -day. Remind yourself. Remind yourself to be thankful, no matter what season you're in. You might look around you right now and not see a whole lot to thank him for. Thank him for your salvation. Thank him that you have not been consumed. Thank you. Thank him for his forgiveness. Thank you. Thank him for his mercy that greets you every morning when you wake up. Thank him for every plate of food that you have had. Because I know that maybe you think it's the money in the bank that got you that. Or your job. Or how hard you worked your way up the corporate ladder. Or, or how many years you have put under your belt in school. But if God didn't water the ground, you wouldn't eat. You wouldn't eat. And if you withheld the rain, your supermarkets wouldn't be filled up. I want us to start thinking about that. This is not the time to be spiritually lazy. This is not the time for fruitlessness. And in order for us to produce more fruit, the Bible says you're going to go through a pruning process. I'll tell you right now, it's not fun. You might even feel like you're dying, but that's because you are. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. I am not living for myself anymore. I am not my own. The Bible says I was bought at a price. Jesus Christ paid my ransom note. I was a slave to sin. He paid my ransom note. He paid your ransom note. Now, many of you might say, well, I thought we weren't saved by works. No, you weren't saved by works. You, are, you were saved by grace through faith. But it is that very same grace that is going to enable and equip and empower you to do the good works that were preordained and predecided before you spent a day on this earth. So you are not your own. You are here. You were created for a purpose. And that purpose is to give God glory. That purpose is to save many alive, not by any might or power, but by the spirit of the living God, the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead that now lives in you. The Bible says we are not to hide a lamp under a basket or under a bed. It is meant to give light to everyone in the house. It is meant to give light. He is the light of the world and you bear witness of that light.
It's not the time to shrink back. When I say to have an active prayer life, I'm not just talking about as well everything that you need. Because there is such a thing as selfish prayers. But let me tell you what really moves God. When we take the focus off ourselves for a minute and we start praying for the things that we want to see. That we know. Like for the Lord's will to be done for example. That we know will benefit the earth. Or pray against the things that are anti-God. Right? We're supposed to be intercessors. Some of you are watch supposed to be watchmen on the wall, but you left your post. It's time to get back to your post. The days of playing church are over. The days of going to church on Sunday and living like the devil the rest of the week and partnering up with Satan are over. You cannot serve two masters. You can't sit on the fence forever. Choose this day whom you shall serve. God or the world. God or yourself. God or man. Because if you live to please man, you can't even be a disciple of Christ. That's in the Bible. And Jesus Christ promised, promised one thing. You will be hated for his namesake. Nobody's, there's a lot of people that are go, not going to want to hear what you have to say. You have to tell them anyway. And how are you supposed to reflect the love of Christ in the face of mercilessness if you're not spending time with him? How are you supposed to take on his character and his nature? Because to be a Christian, it means to be Christ-like. So how are you going to be Christ-like if you're not in the word, if Jesus is the word? Jesus is the word made flesh that dwelt among us. If you want to get to know your father in heaven, in a greater way, in a greater capacity, instead of having itching ears and running to the next prophet to find out what God is saying, find out for yourself, consecrate yourselves, purify your vessels, fall on your face, fast and pray, lament over the condition of the world, ask the Lord to take your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh, ask him to kill and destroy every ounce of pride and arrogance and ego and haughtiness and self-righteousness in you. Anything that would be a hindrance to want what he wants to do in and through you. This is not the time to play games. Jesus Christ is coming back. He's coming back like a thief in the night. No one knows the day or the hour. But he says to be sober and be watchful. And too many of us have been distracted for too long. It's time to get back to your first love.